Good morning, friends. Thank you all so much for uh, joining us today. Um, my name is Andrew, uh, and I am going to be with you all this morning for our presentation, Sun, Moon, and Stars. So while we're waiting to begin in just a few minutes, uh, if you would let us know in the comments where you are viewing this from, so we can all say hello and good morning to everyone. So hello to Nicholas and Liliana, who are joining us from, from Maryland. To Mary and Karen as well, good morning to everyone. We're, we're going to be getting started with our program, Sun, Moon, and Stars, in just about four minutes. Thank you all so much for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, my name is Andrew, uh, and I'm going to be your host today for our program, Sun, Moon, and Stars. We're going to be exploring some of the things that you can look for in your sky tonight and all throughout the rest of our summer. Before we do begin, though, which we're going to do in just a couple of minutes, uh, I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for spending some time with me this morning uh, as we are going to be today exploring some of my favorite things to talk about. Now, again, my name is Andrew, um, and we're going to be getting started in just a couple of minutes at just about 1130. If you have any questions while we're waiting to get started, you can uh, type them into the comments um, and uh, uh, we can answer them before the show. You could also type in any questions you have during the show as well into the comments and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. Um, but hello to uh, Logan and Ethan joining us today from Lincoln Park. Hello to... Uh, so are you joining us from Jersey City? Oivy joining us from Montclair. And Ahan joining us from Jersey City, who wants to know if there is oil in the sun. That is such a good question. It turns out there is not any oil in the sun. The sun is made up of gas, of gases called hydrogen. Helium. So we do not we do not find any oil in the sun, but we do find lots of very very hot gas. But we will be getting started with our show in just a couple of moments. Thank you all so much, and uh, I can't wait to get started.
All right, so good morning, friends. Thank you all so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and switch our screen around so you can all see me. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew, and I'm very excited to be here with you today to talk all about the sun, the moon, and stars. So Mr. Kango uh, asked me to be here today to talk about the night sky with you. This is going to be our final LSC Junior. Um, so we wanted to do something a little bit different today, and he asked me to speak with you today and show you the night sky. Now, uh, if you have questions for me, uh, you can write them into the comments. If you see me looking away from, from you in either direction, probably because I'm checking to see if you have any questions or uh, anything that you would like to add. I'm going to also be asking you some questions during the program. If you want to let me know what, what your answers are, you can, uh, uh, you or any grown-ups with you can can type your answers uh, into the into the comments. Or if you want to keep your answers to yourself, that's fine too. Um, but we're going to be today talking about the sun, the moon, and stars. One more thing, very quickly before we do begin. Um, so somewhere near near my head, either on the left or on the right, I'm not sure which side quite yet, um, there should be a, a little donate button. And that's a way that you can support us. Uh, you can support the Liberty Science Center uh, and our mission to continue to do programming like this throughout the rest of the summer. This will be our final LSC Junior which is aimed uh, at our youngest scientists, those of us uh, uh, in pre-K to about second grade. But we will continue to do other programming. Uh, you, you'll be able to see me uh, and, and, and my friend Mike uh, on Thursdays at one o'clock. We're gonna be talking about other astronomy and space topics all summer long. So we hope to see you tuning in for, uh, for some of those as well. But today we are going to be talking about some of what you can look for in the sky tonight and all during the rest of the summer. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the sky as would look a little bit later on today if we were to step outside. This is a little bit later on this afternoon. So looking around at the sky that we can see right now, what do you see in the sky? What do you see up there in our big, beautiful blue sky? And it's one of my favorite things to do to go outside on a nice sunny day and just take a look at everything that that we can find. Yeah, so I'm I'm seeing a few of us mentioning that we can see the moon in the sky. That's exactly right. Even though it's the daytime, we can still sometimes see the moon, even while the sun is also up as well. So, so I'm seeing that Addie can see both the moon, both the moon. And so Margie mentions that she can see the sun as well. So yeah, those are the two big bright things we can see in the sky right now. Now, are there ever any other things that you can see in the sky during the daytime? Besides just the sun and the moon, are there ever any other things that you see in the sky? You can definitely see the sun and the moon right now. now. If I look outside of my window right now, I can actually see some clouds. We can sometimes see lots and lots of clouds in the sky. Today, though, in our view of the sky, we won't be dealing with clouds very often. A few other things that I often see in the sky that I'm seeing a few of you mentioning as well. In addition to clouds, we can sometimes see birds in the sky. And one of my favorite things to do is to go outside and look around in the sky for birds. We can oftentimes hear birds more than we can see them. We sometimes also can see airplanes in the sky. So there's lots that we can see in the sky during the daytime. But I'm excited to share with you some more things that we can see in the sky at night. The summer is a great time of the year to go outside and look at the stars and the night sky. 
it stays nice and warm, and we often get very, very clear skies. So we're going to now wait a little bit until after the sun has moved across the sky, until it has gone and set beneath the horizon. We're going to wait until about an hour or two after the sun goes down, and it starts to get nice and dark. So, what do you see in the sky now that the sun has set and it has gotten a little bit darker? And, and, and while we're thinking and looking at what we can find in our sky now, let me see if there are any questions that we can answer. So, uh, Alexandra would like to know why is it that we can see the moon during the daytime? That is such a good question. So we can see the moon during the daytime because it is still being lit up by the sun. And it's bright enough that, that we can see it even through the very, very bright blue sky. So, so yes, we can definitely now see the moon still. We can see lots of stars as well. I'm seeing Victoria mentioning she can see the stars. I see a lot of our friends mentioning that we can see the stars now. We can see a lot of stars, but before we look at the stars more, I do want to talk about the moon a little bit more. Because the moon has always been one of my favorite things to look at in the sky. It's so bright and so beautiful tonight. And this is what the moon will look like tonight. Now, does the moon always look exactly like this? Like it does here? Or does the moon ever kind of change its shape? Hmm. What do you think? Does the moon ever change its shape or does it always look exactly like we're seeing it here? And while we're waiting to think about that a little bit, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm also seeing that some of us have found a couple of planets in the sky. You're exactly right. We can also see a couple planets in the sky. Yes, so we can definitely, yeah, so we can definitely see the moon changing shape in the sky sometimes. It doesn't always look like this. In fact, if we were to step outside three days from today, the moon would look a little bit different. If we waited three more days and looked at the moon again, the moon would look like it's gotten a little bit bigger, right? The moon has also moved across the sky, and the moon changes its shape. We call these the phases of the moon. And in three nights, we are going to be able to see a full moon that's going to look something like this. So every night, or every day you go and look for the moon, it will always look a little bit different. Some days, though, we can't see the moon. It just isn't bright enough for us to see. But during the summer, see how many different shapes of the moon you can find in the sky. In three days, we're going to be able to see this nice, bright, and beautiful full moon. Now, have you ever thought about what it might be like to travel to the moon? It's always been something that I've wanted to do, to travel off of the Earth, put on a, put on a space helmet and a space suit to keep me safe, get into a rocket ship and fly to the moon. Now, it, now it's not something that I can do right now for real, but we can use our imaginations and our view of the sky here to actually leave the Earth and travel all the way to the moon. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to use our imaginations and fly off of the Earth and travel 250,000 miles all the way to the moon. And once we get close to the moon, wow, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to look at. Now, when we look at the moon, what colors do you notice here on the moon? What colors do you notice on the moon?
So what colors can we see when we look at the moon right now? There's really two different colors that we can see on the moon, right? We can, maybe three colors, depending on how specific we want, we want to do. I'm seeing Jennifer and Evelyn mention that they can see white, they can see gray, and they can see black. We can definitely see all of those colors on the moon. Now, we can see these very dark colors here. We've actually got a special name for these very dark areas on the moon, like the ones we see here and here and here. We call these dark areas Maria. Can you say that word with me? Maria. So we call those dark areas Maria. The lighter areas, some of, some of these white colors and the lighter gray, we call these the highlands. So can you say that with me too? Highlands. So the highlands are a little bit higher up. You can think of them kind of like a, kind of like a mountain almost. These darker areas, these maria, are lower down. Actually used to have lava in them. As cool as that sounds. Used to be lava here in these dark areas. Now, I've seen a few of our friends today mentioning and talking about craters as something else that we can see on the moon. If you've never heard that word before, crater, let's take a closer look at what exactly a crater is. You can think of a crater as kind of like a great big hole in the moon. These holes get there when really big rocks, we call them asteroids or meteors, crash into the moon, like this one that we're seeing right here. This here is one great big crater. If we spend some time though and fly around on the moon, which we're going to do now, we're going to fly ourselves all around the moon, we find lots of other places on the moon with craters on them as well. Some of these craters are very large, very big, bigger than, bigger than a house, bigger than even an entire city. Some of these craters are kind of small, maybe the size of a car or a house, or even smaller than that. The moon is very old, so over time it's gotten lots and lots and lots of craters on it. And actually, we can see something really cool on this crater here. We see actually a crater inside of another crater. That happens sometimes too. Now, the surface of the moon is very dusty, very, very dusty. It would almost be like walking through sand almost on its surface. It's a really great place that I hope, if you would like to someday, that you can visit for yourself. Maybe, maybe, maybe someday you'll be an astronaut who, who, who gets inside of a spacesuit and walks around on the surface of the moon. It would be very, very cool. But for now, I am going to take us away from the moon. We're going to close our eyes and pretend that we're back in the nighttime sky here on the Earth. We're going to go back to the night sky that we would be able to see tonight from wherever you are. Right? I'm in New Jersey, right outside of Jersey City. This is what I will see. And wherever you are you'll be able to see these exact same things in the sky tonight. Now, let me see, let me read through a little bit of what you've been sharing with me and see if we have any moon questions that we can answer. So, so Shirley wants to know if we could pick up the dust on the moon. That's a really, really great question. We actually could, and in fact, some astronauts that have been to the moon have done exactly that. They went to the moon and took with them a shovel, and they scooped up some of the dust and some of the rocks that they found on the moon and brought them back to the Earth. So we actually have some of the moon on the Earth with us, which is pretty cool.
Let's see. So how old is the moon? I've seen a few of our friends asking today how old the moon is. That's such a good question. So the moon is way older than any of us. The moon is about four billion years old. That's so, 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 so long ago. Four billion years old. So, so old. Four billion years old. Let's see. So Brenda would like to know how cold does the moon get on the far side of the moon, where it's really dark sometimes. So the moon can get down to about minus 200 degrees, even minus 300 degrees. It gets very, very cold on the moon. Way colder than it gets anywhere on the Earth. Minus 200 degrees. How many craters are there on the moon? Victoria would like to know. That's a good question. I, I don't know the answer to that question. There are thousands of them though, maybe even hundreds of thousands. There's many, many more than even I can count. A whole lot of craters. So many of them, so, 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 so many craters. It'd be very hard to count them all. Let's see, so let me take one more moon question here. Oh, so uh, uh, Sheeta, uh, her, her son would like to know, why was there lava on the moon? It's a very great question. When the moon was very young, it used to be a lot hotter than it is today. So some of the rocks that are on the moon were so hot that they were actually lava. On the inside, that lava kind of moved up to the surface of the moon. But there's no more lava there today. It's too cold on the moon for there to be lava anymore. But there used to be, which is really, really great. So now that we've seen a little bit of the moon, we'll be able to take more of your questions about the moon later. I want to talk with you a little bit about the stars. So there are so many stars that we can see in the sky. And they all are a little bit different. Some stars are different colors, right? If we zoom in very, very closely on this part of the sky here, we can see different colors of stars. We can see red and orange stars. We can see blue and yellow and even some white stars. The so stars come in all different colors. Some stars are very bright. Like this one right here is really, really bright. Some stars aren't very bright at all. These ones over here are very, very faint. We almost need to squint and get really, really close to be able to see them. So all stars are a little bit different from each other. They're different colors, they're different temperatures, they're different sizes. But what I like to do with the stars is I like to use the stars to draw pictures. So we're going to do that a little bit today. We're going to use our stars today and draw some pictures. Now, whenever I go outside and look at the stars, there's always one picture that I love to draw before any other one. To find it, though, we actually need to move our sky a little bit here. So we're going to pretend that we're going to turn our heads all the way around. 180 degrees around to look over at the other part of the sky. So we're going to do that. We're going to move away from the part of the sky that has the moon in it. And we're going to now look over here. So one of my favorite shapes to find in the sky is something that maybe you have heard of before. It's something that we call the Big Dipper. Maybe you've heard of the Big Dipper before. If not, that's okay. The Big Dipper is made up of seven stars. Seven stars that together make up the shape of a great big spoon. Or like a really, really big saucepan almost. And I'm going to give you a moment to look at the sky here and see if you can find the shape I'm talking about. Big Dipper for seven stars that make the shape of a really, really big spoon. Let 
Hmm. Let's see. So the Big Dipper is right over here. I see a lot of our friends have already found the Big Dipper. So we are looking at these seven stars here. Let's, let's actually take a bit of a closer look at this part of the sky. These seven stars that make this shape here are what we call the Big Dipper. Now, the Big Dipper is like a great big spoon. When we use our imaginations, we can see it looking something like this. Now, maybe in these same seven stars, maybe you think this shape looks like something else. Maybe you think it looks more like a, like a, like a wheelbarrow, maybe, or maybe like a, like a wagon. That's okay, too. We're going to use our imaginations today to figure out what we can find in the sky. And in fact, if we add a few other stars around the Big Dipper, we can make it into another shape. When we draw some lines between these stars, kind of kind of like a connect the dots puzzle, we can make a shape that looks like this, this stick figure. Now, I'd like us all to spend a moment and use our imaginations. What does this shape look like to you that I've drawn out just as a stick figure? If you would like to let me know in the comments what you think it looks like, that would be great. Or if you want to keep it to yourself. Or maybe you can share it with anyone that you are watching this with. Any of your friends that, 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 are, that, are, that are sitting there with you. Hmm, okay. So I am seeing a few of our friends mentioning that this looks kind of like a bear. Okay. Ooh, so Nagi thinks this kind of looks like a big penguin. Arjun thinks this looks kind of like a dog or a cat. Hmm. Sarah says this looks kind of like a pterodactyl, maybe like a bird or a duck. Uh, Lori thinks this, this looks kind of like a dancing stick man. I can definitely see that too. Wow. And I, I love hearing all of your imaginations and what you see over here. Now, when I look at this part of the sky, it to me kind of looks like a big horse almost. We can see maybe the neck and the head of the horse over here, the front two legs of our horse, the back two legs, and a little tail of our horse down here. Well, Keith says this kind of looks like someone playing golf. I can definitely see that too. Maybe a Maybe a person, maybe an archer, maybe a bear, a stick insect, a grasshopper. So many great answers that we're seeing so far. Now, even though we love to use our own imaginations, this shape that we're seeing here is something called a constellation. And a constellation is a shape that scientists all around the world agree on what it looks like. But I still do think we should use our own imaginations too. But to scientists all around the world, they see this shape as a big bear that looks like this. This big bear is named Ursa Major, which just means the big bear. Now, the big bear is also up in the sky with another bear, a little bear, named Ursa Minor, which means the little bear. So these are two shapes, two constellations that we can find in the sky, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Now, if we look very closely at the shapes and the pictures of these two bears, is there something a little bit different about these two bears than, than maybe bears that we've seen before, maybe pictures of bears that we've seen before? Is there anything different 
that you notice about these bears and how they look? Ah, oh, and, and Margie mentions that this kind of looks like a mama bear and a baby bear. That's one of the stories that we like to tell about these two bears, that Ursa Major is, is the big mama bear and Ursa Minor is, is her baby bear cub. That's one of the stories that I like to tell about Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Yeah, and Shirley and Evelyn, Margie, Shilpa, all are mentioning to me that these have tails, not just any tails, but kind of long tails. Hmm, especially Ursa Minor, right? He has a very, 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 very long tail. He almost looks more like a squirrel than a bear in this picture of him. Well, why might these two bears have long tails? One of the stories that I like to tell about these two bears is that they used to be bears that lived down here on the earth. So they used to be bears that lived down here on the earth. But these bears... And it looks like our stream may have dropped there for just a moment. Should be back now, though, I hope. All right, we are back. Sorry about that. Now, these two bears love, 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 loved space. So they wanted to be up with the stars. So they asked one of their friends, who was really strong. He was a Greek god named Zeus if Zeus could put them up in the sky. To do that, Zeus grabbed these two bears by their short little tails. He spun them around really, really fast. He let them go, and they flew up into the sky. When he did that, he stretched out their tails. And that's why the bears have these big, long tails that they see here today. But we can make up lots of stories about these two bears, something that I love to do. But I wanted to mention a star in these, uh, in this part of the sky. One star in particular that's really, 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 really important. So down here at the end of the tail of what we just saw as Ursa Minor is a very, very important star. Finding it though can sometimes be difficult. It can sometimes be very, very hard. So we're going to use the two stars here that are at the end of the bowl of the Big Dipper to help us out. If we draw a line through these two stars and follow where it points us, it will show us directly to this star. And this star we call the North Star. We call this star the North Star. Now we call it the North Star because it always helps us find the cardinal direction north. The North Star never moves, which is why it stays right where it is in the sky. So we can always see the North Star. And remember, these constellations, these shapes, are things that you can see in the sky tonight. If it's clear tonight, you can go outside and find these with your own eyes. I know I'll be looking for them if it's clear tonight. I don't know if it will be. If it's not clear tonight, though, you can still go outside any night during the summer that it's clear and find them then too. Let's see. So I am, I love reading all of your ideas as to what those shapes might, uh, might, might look like. I love how all of us are using our imaginations. And I do see a few of us mentioning that those two bears were kind of upside down and they kind of are upside down. As, as the night goes on, no, they'll end up getting turned right side back up again. But uh, I, I, hope, I hope that they don't get too dizzy being upside down, which they might be. So uh, we've looked now at this part of the sky. The Big Dipper and Ursa Major, Ursa Minor are some of my favorite things to find. You can find them actually all year round. Every night of the year, we can find them. But I now would like to move our sky back around a little bit and turn around so we are facing 
the other way around to where we were facing earlier in the show. So we're going to turn around until we're facing back toward the south once again. We're going to turn ourselves back around to the same part of the sky where we can see the moon. And this is the southern part of our sky. Let's see. So, I'm seeing a couple of questions about why are certain stars yellow. That's such a good question. And actually, we're going to zoom back in on that part of the sky, very low in the sky toward the south here, so we can maybe answer that question. So, some of these stars are kind of yellow or blue or red. The stars have different colors because they are all different temperatures. Blue stars, like these stars right here, are really, really hot. Red stars are much colder. They're still really hot compared to the Earth, but they're colder, so they look red. Yellow stars, like maybe this one right here, or this one up here, are yellow because they're kind of in between the red and blue stars in temperature. Okay. So we are looking now very, very low in the sky toward the south. We're looking now toward the south. And there's a couple of really great constellations that we can find here during the summer. These are two of my favorite to look for. I want you to take a moment, look at the sky over here, very low. And so we're looking very low in the sky here. And see if you can find a shape that kind of looks like a letter J. See if we can kind of look for a shape that looks like a letter J. Uh, so Sarah wants to know, while we're looking for that letter J, uh, what temperatures are the white stars? That's a good question. So white stars are a little bit hotter than yellow stars, but not quite as hot as blue stars. So in terms of temperature of stars, red are the coldest, yellow are a little bit warmer, white are a little bit warmer than that, and then blue are the hottest stars. So we can kind of see a, a, a little letter J right here. I see a few of our friends have already found it. So this letter J right here. Now especially this part right here, if we kind of use this red star as the top of the J, it kind of hooks and curves down here. Now if you have ever seen a movie called Moana, one of my favorite movies, Moana. I love Moana. Very, very great movie. In that movie, Moana looks for a group of stars that she calls the fish hook, Maui's fish hook. And that hook looks a little something like this, this same little letter J shape. Some of us around the world see that as a fish hook. We call this Maui's fish hook. So if you've ever seen Moana and seen her look for Maui's fish hook, that's exactly where it is very low in the sky toward the south. If we use some other stars around the fish hook, though, we make it into another constellation that looks like this. This is another constellation that I love to look for during the summertime. This is a really great one to find in the summer. You can't see it during the winter, though, only during the summer. What shape does this look like to you? We've taken our little fish hook shape and added a few more stars above it. What does this look like to you? Okay, so I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing Jolin mentioning that this kind of looks like uh, like a scorpion almost. Marion mentioned this kind of looks like a swing. I can definitely see a swing there. Shirley mentioned this kind of looks like Captain Hook's arm. Oh, I can definitely see that. Definitely see that. Kind of, kind of looks like a big letter J. It looks almost, almost like a hammerhead shark to me. If you've ever seen a picture of a hammerhead shark, that's what it kind of looks like to me. A hammerhead shark. 
But as I'm seeing a few, a few of our friends mentioning, oh, it looks kind of like a seahorse. I can definitely see a seahorse. Audrey thinks this looks like a seahorse. Okay. Now, as a constellation, remember that's what scientists see this shape as. They see this as a shape called Scorpius, the scorpion. So here is Scorpius the scorpion with the J shape here, making up kind of the kind of the end of his tail, right? The really, really dangerous pointy end of his tail moving up to the rest of his body. Up here are, are his, two, uh, his, his two claws. So this is Scorpius the scorpion. Over to the left of Scorpius the scorpion, we find another really, really great shape that I like to find, which kind of looks like a teapot, almost. This little teapot shape right, right here. We're going to draw the art and then take it away so we can see the stars that make up the teapot. These three stars here make up kind of the spout of the teapot. These three stars make up the lid of the teapot. And these couple stars make up the handle of the teapot. So these are a couple shapes that I love to look for here in the south. Scorpius the scorpion, and this teapot shape right here. But also, if we add some more stars around our teapot shape, this, these make up the stars of another constellation called Sagittarius the centaur. Centaur is, is a make-believe creature that's kind of half human and half horse. He's carrying a bow and arrow. So we call him an archer. So this is Sagittarius. We can see so many constellations during the year. These are just a couple of my favorites to find over here. So, so, so Shirley uh, uh, mentions that constellations are sometimes hard to find. She wants to know how she can find them more easily. Well, you are exactly right about that. Constellations can sometimes be really, really hard to find. So really, the best way to start to find constellations is to use your imagination and to draw out your own shapes and draw out your own figures in the sky. That can really help getting your brain thinking along the lines of drawing shapes. Um, but the best tip that I have to find constellations is just to go outside anytime there's a clear night and just continue to practice looking for them. Finding constellations and stars is just like anything else. It takes a lot of practice. Um, but, but, but here today, learning exactly what the shapes look like can make it a whole lot easier. And starting with some, some simple shapes like the J and the, and the fish hook here is a great first step as well. So maybe tonight you can look outside and just try and find one that we mentioned today. Maybe we're gonna maybe we'll start with the Big Dipper tonight. Maybe we'll start with 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 the fish hook tonight. Who knows? It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. Suzanne wants to know this is, this is a really, really great question. How do the constellations get their names? That's such a good question. A lot of these names were were invented hundreds and hundreds of years ago in Greece. The people who lived in Greece way back then loved to tell stories like this. They made up the names and we see them today. They're in, and we still have those names today. Now, I'm looking at my clock and I'm seeing that we are almost out of our time today. But before we run out of time, there's two more things I want to show you very, very quickly that are two really cool things to look for in this same part of the sky. If you look over to the left of our little teapot shape here, you look over to the left of, of our teapot. There's going to be one really, 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 really bright dot of light right here. And this is a planet. This right here is a planet. But it's not just any planet. It's actually the largest planet in the entire solar system. Largest planet this is the planet Jupiter. If we look at Jupiter through a telescope, it can look something like this. Jupiter is a beautiful planet 
with one really, really big storm right here. This is called the Great Red Spot. These big bands of gas, this white, orange, and brown. Jupiter is a planet in the same way that the Earth is a planet. We could never live on Jupiter, though, because Jupiter has no solid ground for us to stand on. Jupiter's made up of nothing but gas. So if we tried to land on Jupiter, we would actually fall right through it. So it's not a place we can live, but it is a place that we can learn more about and study. Jupiter is huge, so big that we could fit over a thousand planet Earths inside of it. If we look down and to the left from Jupiter, we find another planet. And this is a planet that you may have heard of before. It's famous because of its rings. What planet might that be? What's a planet you may have heard of before that has rings? So this is a planet that we call Saturn. Saturn is a planet that we find with these big rings around it. And the final thing that I would like to do with you all today, just like how earlier we went to the moon and flew around to the moon, I today want to take you all into the rings of Saturn. That sound like fun? One of my favorite places to go in the solar system. And go ahead, we're going to leave the Earth one more time and travel through the rings of Saturn. Now, from very, very up close to Saturn, the rings almost look like just one big solid piece, like a big hula hoop almost. But it turns out that these rings of Saturn are not made up of just one big solid piece. They are really made up of lots of little smaller pieces of ice and rock. And we can see these small pieces of ice and rock here as we're flying through them. All of these little pieces here are little chunks of ice and rock and ice and rock and ice and rock. There's so many of them, billions of them. They all travel around Saturn and they together make up one great big ring. Inside of the rings of Saturn, though, we actually find moons. There's a moon here that lives inside the rings. This moon is named Pan, and it lives inside the rings of Saturn. So the rings of Saturn are one of my favorite places to visit in the entire solar system. I absolutely love the rings of Saturn. I'm glad that I was able to travel today with all of you to go and visit those rings of Saturn. As a quick reminder of where we can find those two planets tonight, and all during the summer, we can look toward the south. We can look over toward the south part of the sky, and the brightest little dot of light you're going to find there is Jupiter. Over to the left from Jupiter, you'll find the planet Saturn. So I hope that tonight, or some night during the summer, you can take some time to step outside and look at the stars and the planets and the moon and find for your own, with your own eyes, some of the shapes and things that we mentioned today. But this is now the end of our program today. We've looked all around at the sky. So this is going to be the end of our program today. Once again, I would like to thank you all for joining us today for our grand finale of LSC Junior. Uh, uh, if you'd like to support us, and if you are able to, you can do that uh, uh, through our, our, our donations button. It's either over here or over here. I'm still not sure which, so somewhere near my head on this video. Um, that's the best way to support us as a nonprofit as, uh, as we continue to remain closed. If you want to keep learning more about space and astronomy, though, you can join me again on Thursdays at 1 o'clock. Either be me or my friend, Mr. Mike, who will be continuing to talk with us about space. So it's going to be Thursdays at 1 o'clock. If you've been joining us, though, recently for our trivia games, uh, our, our trivia host, Depeche, is taking a week off this week. 
Um, but we're going to be coming back with trivia uh, starting on Tuesday. So not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, we'll be starting back again with our trivia game. So again, I do want to thank you all so much for joining me this morning and now into this afternoon. And thank you all for following along with me today and with Mr. Kango all throughout the past few months. If you want to keep on learning and doing science this summer, you can always go together uh, with your grown-ups to our website, lsc.org. We have more really great activities in science that we can do there. But I do again want to thank you all, and I wish you all some very clear night skies tonight and some great chances stargazing. I am going to hang out, though, for another couple of minutes and answer any more questions you have before we do run all the way out of time. So we're going to answer a couple of questions. And thank you, Logan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and uh, Marianne, yes. So, so this, so this video uh, is going to be archived. So, if you have any friends or family who have missed this, uh, uh, it'll be uh, archived on our Facebook page. Um, there's a little videos button on our Facebook page. You can click that, and it, it will show up there. Let me see. So, I saw. A Great question earlier and I'm trying to find it. There it is. So Mary wants to know if the teapot is a real constellation. So the teapot is not an official constellation. It's just a shape like the Big Dipper that that we kind of make up with our man or that, that we can sometimes see, but it's not the one that astronomers see. That would be Sagittarius. That's the one, that's the constellation that that uh, that that uh, Sagittarius sees. So Victoria wants to know, what is the brightest star in Scorpius? That's such a great question. Let me switch our view back over to the night sky. Find my button here. There we go. So here again is Scorpius. The brightest star in Scorpius is this one right here. This, this, this red star is named Antares. That star is named Antares. Let me let me write out how to spell Antares. So that bright red star is Antares. Makes kind of kind of the middle part of the body of Scorpius. Great question though. Great question. So Charles wants to know what is my favorite planet? And actually I'm curious as to what all of you what is your favorite planet too? I'll tell you mine. But I'm curious what your favorite planet is. My favorite planet is Mars. Mars is my favorite planet because I love the color red, and Mars is, is kind of red. It's also really interesting because we don't we actually don't know very much about Mars. There's a lot that we still need to learn. And the young scientists, like all of you watching today, are gonna be the ones that teach us about Mars. And I'm really excited to see what all of you are able to help us learn about Mars in the future. So Shirley wants to know, how do you see Jupiter and Saturn? That's a really, really great question. So Shirley, if you go outside tonight, um, right as the sun is going down, and you look toward the south, that's the opposite part of the sky as we saw the Big Dipper, you can find them with just your eyes. So Jupiter is going to stand out a lot tonight. It's going to look really, really bright. So if you look outside toward the south and find just a really bright dot of light, that's Jupiter. It's going to be the brightest thing uh, the brightest dot of light in the sky. The moon will be brighter, but Jupiter will be the brightest dot of light. Shirley, Shirley also mentions that uh, their favorite planet is Uranus because it's tilted on its axis. Yeah, that's, that's a really cool, cool fact about Uranus. It's actually knocked over on its side. So Julia wants to know, why does the moon have craters? That's such a good question. So the moon has craters because really big rocks called asteroids and meteors have hit the moon. When those asteroids hit the moon, they form craters. It's a great, great question.
Arvin mentions that, that their favorite planet is Saturn. Nagi mentioned that their favorite planet is Mars. Tria uh, wants to know if Jupiter is made of gas. And yes, Jupiter is made up of gas. That's a really, really great question. Jupiter is made up of nothing but gas. It's all gas. There's one big ball of gas. If you want to get really exact, it's made up of a lot of a gas called hydrogen. It's the, it's the element that the gas is made of, hydrogen. How does the Earth look from the sun? That's a really great question. So if so, if we were on the sun, which I wouldn't recommend, it's really hot, but if we were close to the sun, the Earth would look just like a little tiny blue dot. The Earth wouldn't look anything like it does to us on the surface. The Earth would look just like a little tiny, tiny blue dot. Because we'd be very far away from the Earth if we were on the sun. Let's see, so I believe we have time for just one more question. Let's see. So Tali's favorite planet is Saturn and Zachary's favorite planet is Mars. Thank you all so much for sharing your favorite planets with me. It's always one of my favorite, favorite things to, uh, to hear is everyone's favorite planet. Let's see. So, so, so what is the brightest star? That's such a good question. What is the brightest star? So from the Earth, the brightest star is the sun. So the sun is a star. The sun is just like any of the other things, any of the other stars we see in the night sky. The sun looks brighter, though, because it's a lot closer. But the sun is a star, just like the stars that we saw today in our nighttime sky. All right. Uh, so, uh, so what about the Whirlpool Galaxy? What about the Whirlpool Galaxy indeed? That's a great thing to bring up. So the Whirlpool Galaxy is, is a whole other galaxy. We didn't have time to talk about it very much today, but the Whirlpool Galaxy is really, really cool. Um, we don't have time to talk about it today, but it's a really, really big, beautiful galaxy. Um, but, but with that, I do once again want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, uh, again, if you'd like to and are able to financially support us, we have a, a donate button somewhere around my head on the stream. I still haven't figured out exactly where it is, but I'm pretty sure it's there. Um, but I want to thank you all so much once again for joining me today as we explore the sky. I hope you all have some very, very dark and clear night skies during the summer. Uh, and have a wonderful rest of your day and a great summer. Thank you all so much.